What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, and this is your Bridgerton review. This is the last episode of the season. Um, we um, are done. Thank you guys for sticking it out with me and being patient and waiting for the reviews. I really enjoyed reviewing both Bling Empire and Bridgerton. I am thinking about another show on Netflix to review, and it's called Behind Her Eyes. I ha I've only watched the trailer. I think it's also based on a book, but if you guys wanna go watch that trailer, come back in the comments and let me know if you want to watch that series. I'm gonna watch it anyway, but if you would like to, you know, if you guys would like to discuss the the episodes, then we can review it and discuss it. So just let me know. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment. Let the diva know you stopped by. Let's get started. This is episode eight, season finale. We start off with Lady Whistledown, and her circular is just basically talking about the truth of marriage behind closed doors. And it shows just all the couples going through their different, you know, issues or whatever. Henry is painting a portrait for the Duke and Daphne and he's asking them to smile and move closer together because you know they are you know fighting because they're getting ready to separate right after this last ball that they have he's going to leave and they're going to go their separate ways he's asking them to move closer and at one point Daphne and Simon look at each other and every time he looks at her, he gets like super duper soft. And then it's almost like he remembers like, oh, wait, oh, wait, I got to be I got to be tough. I got to be tough. I can't, you know. And when they were looking at each other, Henry was like, that's what I'm talking about. A picture of devotion. I think that's what he said. And um, the actually portrait came out really nice. He says to her um, while they're doing the portrait, I'll leave London. I'll leave um, London when, I, when we're done here and this and that. And she was like, no, because I don't need any other rumors about our marriage swirling around so you will stay we're gonna have a ball once the ball is over you can go on to, on your merry way eloise is asking benedict about madame delacroix and you know whether he whether he knows like who she is and you know because she thinks that <laughs> she thinks that delacroix is lady whistledown also violet makes an announcement that francesca will be returning from her travels and she'll be home tomorrow Marina and Penelope are having a conversation and Marina's packing up her things, right? Because remember she took that tea in the last episode. She took the tea and she was like, the tea worked. Um, I would have known by now, I would have felt a baby by now. I know that the tea worked. And she was like, I'm sorry, I scared you guys. You know, and then she tells her, Colin, yeah, I could see that you love Colin and you're right. He is a really good man. And maybe one day he'll love you. So then they see a carriage outside of the window and some guy shows up and Marina is looking super duper crazy. So Violet and Daphne and um, are having a conversation and she's letting her know that the Duke and her are going to separate. And she tells her that forgiveness is necessary. And she was like, I didn't do, basically I didn't do anything. Um, he's the one who's holding a grudge and not allowing himself to be happy because he needs to keep this vow that he made when, on his dad's deathbed. The Featheringtons show up. I don't remember where they were, but the Featherings, oh, they were in, were they, were they at the Modices? I don't remember where they were. But anyways, the Featheringtons show up and they were like, oh, we hear that you guys are having a ball, but we didn't get an invitation. And Violet tells Lady Featherington, girl, tell your daughters why you really didn't get invited. Tell them why. Then Daphne goes, well, I don't see the problem with it invite them right it's okay so they're all happy about it so they're trying to figure out like what are we going to wear because we don't have any dresses we don't have any money what are we going to wear somebody with a message comes up while they're there and they're like somebody by the name of crane showed up at the house and they were like crane because that is george's last name so they're all looking surprised and daphne was like i want to go see too so everybody winds up at the featherington's house but it's not george it's actually his brother philip and he lets everybody know that George actually died in battle, but that he was writing Marina this and he found a half written letter and he loved her and he wanted to get in contact with her. And she was really upset because she was like, I really 
misjudged him. He loved me the whole time and I was wrong and she just feels really, really bad and she runs upstairs. Eloise and Delacroix, so Eloise goes to the modiste and she's like, I need a dress for my sister's ball. She was like, girl, you already have a dress. What's up? <laughs> what do you want <laughs> so and she was like am i like it, it looked like she was interrupting something because delacroix's hair was all baby when i tell you her hair was all over the place and then in the shot the way they panned the shot you could see benedict creeping down the stairs like oh my god why is my sister here he was like i just wanted to basically let you know because mind you eloise thinks that delacroix is lady whistledown so she was like, I just want to let you know, don't mess with my family. In other words, she tells her, and she was like, don't worry. She was like, don't ruin my family's name. Because basically, Eloise is saying, you're messing with my brother. You're of a different class. So I think that you're Lady Whistledown. Don't, when it's time, do not put nothing about my family in your little circular. Okay, girl? And Delacroix was like, you don't have to worry about me. I'm sure Lady Whistledown is you know is securing herself and she could do it like she's just looking at her like girl get out so then benedict comes downstairs and he was like you need to lock the door next time her hair was all over the place i was like oh that was back there screwing so what happened after that so daphne and simon um they are talking about going to will's boxing match right and so she's there like passing in in the hallway and she's like um, what did your dad do? What did your dad do to you? And he's like, it's not the time for this conversation. He was like, I'm doing this for you. Trust me, I'm doing this for you. You are better off without me. So he walks away, walks away. So they're at the boxing match. Everybody's taking bets. Um, and then Will tells his wife, what if I don't win this fight? And she's looking like, what? And I guess he's trying to tell her in so many words, that he's about to throw the fight so they can come into a lot of money, right? Because remember, Featherington made him an offer that he couldn't refuse. And so Featherington talks to these bookies who one has this scar on his face, honey, they don't look, they look of questionable character, okay? And somebody you don't wanna fool with. So Featherington makes his bet and he hands over the deed to his house. But before that, the guys were like, we know your word ain't shit, we know your word is worthless, so we got you. So he goes, no, no, no. My bet is on the beast and I'm going to give you my, the deed to my house. And if I lose, you can have my house. <sighs> Baby. So the Bridgentons show up to the boxing match and Anthony sees Sienna. They're just glaring at each other, looking at each other from the side, other side of the room. She's looking at him. He's looking at her, right? Also, Simon finally shows up as well, and he sees Featherington there, and he's kind of looking like, what's up? What's going on? Right? So, back at the Featherington's house, we know that Philip is there talking to Marina, and he's basically saying, listen, you are with child, with my brother's child, right? He doesn't know that she drank some tea, honey. He wants to know, I cannot dishonor my my brother's name i'm going to take on his duties i would like to propose marriage to you so that i can make sure that you are protected and that you are taken care of and she was like i can't i don't love you i don't know you um i can't marry you and he's like well your he would want you to be taken care of so allow me to fulfill my brother's wishes i was like baby honey it, I mean, what would you do? What would you do if the, honey, this is like so far-fetched. What would you do if the person you got pregnant by died and his brother was like, I need to take care of my brother's responsibilities, marry me so that you can be protected and taken care of? What would y'all do? Oh my God, oh my God. So she was like, no, I can't do that. I, you need to go home, this and that. So when he leaves, Featherington was like, girl, you really fucked up. Like that was a decent proposal and you really declined it. You really could have been said like, girl, what the fuck is wrong with you? She was like, I can't play these games anymore of pretending I'm not gonna, I'm not about to do that. So she's done with that. So Daphne is snooping around in Cliveden and she finds the letters that Simon wrote to his dad and she's just all emotional about it 
and some some letters that his dad has never opened or read like his dad was a asshole like a supreme asshole Anthony sees Sienna from across the room at they're going back and forth from scene to scene so I'm just gonna go as it goes so Anthony sees Sienna from across the room right and she's sitting there across the, from across the other side of the ring he's sitting on the other side of the ring and they're just looking at each other and they're just looking baby. they just look baby the next shot them motherfuckers is underneath the damn stairs fucking I was like <laughs> Oh my God, Anthony and Sienna, please. But that story gets really good. So they dance under, under the stairs fucking or whatever. Will ends up throwing the fight. Um, He's just laying down on the ground. Simon is looking suspicious, right? He's, he's suspicious. He was like, my boy knows how to fight. Why the hell is he laying on this ground right now? So Featherington is screaming, I won, I won. And the guys that he made the bets with, they looking like, mm-hmm. So as Daphne is over there in the in Clive and going through the letters and stuff, Lady Danbury walks into the room and she was like, I cannot believe that Simon did not know how to speak or had a speech impediment. He was like, what kind of father would not read the letters from his child? And she was like, well, the father was a tyrant and he was also in search of perfection and he demanded perfection. So Simon goes to Will after the fight. He's in the room. He was like, dude, why did you do that? If you needed some money or you needed investors, you could have asked me. And he was like, basically, where, where's the honor in that? And he was like, what do you mean? Where's the honor? Where's your honor in throwing this fight? He was like, you know what's honorable? Taking care of my family. And that's what the fuck I just did. So what you need to do is stop worrying about me and go worry about your family. And so he starts like getting butt coming up in his face. And he was like, don't take your anger out on me. You need to turn around, redirect your anger and fix the shit that you got going on with yourself. I said, OK, take your anger somewhere else. That's what Will told him. Don't worry about what's going on over here. I'm taking care of my family the best way I know how. OK, got his ass together. So Featherington comes home with all the winnings. And he was like, there's more, there's more. We got the money, girl, we back in business. We got this money, we won. Lady Featherington's like, call the Modis. Let's make some appointments. Let's get some dresses for the ball tonight. Daphne and Simon are eating breakfast. She invites him over to the house because Francesca is coming. And you know, they're still, you know, about to separate. So she was like, do you just want to come to the house? My sister is coming back. He was like, okay, I will. So. Kind of what Will said to him about getting rid of his anger and taking care of his family. He needs to go worry about himself. So Simon is kind of softening up, right? He's still really resistant to, you know, or really adamant on actually um, keeping his word of not allowing his father's dusty legacy to continue with him <laughs> through his offspring. <laughs> but that's all. That's another story. Anyway. So Eloise, Benedict, and Anthony are having a conversation. They're sitting down waiting for Francesca to arrive from her travels. And Benedict shares that he is screwing Le, uh, Madame Delacroix. And they're telling the older brother, so they figure because she's of a different class that he would be mad. And he was like, great, that's great. Um, I'm happy for you. And they were all looking like, uh, what? So it's like all of these things that are happening that are kind of breaking tradition because there's no way that Benedict can be seen anywhere with Delacroix, a woman who actually works for a living. <laughs> That's what they said. I was like, what? Are you mad because she has a job and she actually makes her own living? And Eloise was like, that don't have nothing to do with it. What are you talking about? Anyways, so Penelope shows up. And um, Eloise was telling her, yeah, Lady Delacroix is Lady Whistledown. And girl, this and that. She was like, really? She was, honey, she was like, girl, really? Is she really? Uh-huh. So they were having family time. It's like the scene. Everybody's laughing. They're eating like, you know, chocolates. And um, Colin is over there singing. And then you see Simon playing with Daphne's younger sisters and brother. And he's really doing well. He's making origami horses and he's laughing and they're, you know, exchanging glances at each other. And she was like, you know, thinking, oh my God, he's such a good, he could be good with kids, right? As the Featheringtons are in their new dresses, um, Marina's walking around and 
Marina feels something in her. It's like she drops a plate and she like feels her stomach like, oh shit. So the next thing the doctor comes, he's like, I don't know why y'all think these teas work. They don't ever work. <laughs> You're pregnant, girl. And so she's like, fuck. <laughs> Goddamn, Marina can't catch a break. Because had she known she was still pregnant, I'm sure she would have went off with George's brother. But she she didn't told his ass to go. So what are you going to do? Sienna and um, Anthony, they they took it back to the house, right? They're in the bed. And he was like, come to the ball. My sister is having a ball tonight. Come to the ball with me. And she was like, what? He was like, yeah, put on your dress and this and that. She was like, I don't know. Like, you know, kind of hesitant. And he was like, no, just come. You know, I'm ready. I don't care what anybody says about you and this and that. So you got two brothers, right, of this well-to-do family with this high name especially now that Daphne is a duchess now you guys are going around town with the damn seamstress and the opera singer slash a late night diva a late night freak <laughs> so what is happening with the the damn Bridgerton boys anyways so she tells Simon Daphne, next scene, tells Simon, you are so good with kids and this and that. He was like, I know I'm good with kids. They really love me, but that doesn't mean I want any kids. I was like, God damn, Simon, you getting on my damn nerves. At the ball, Simon sees Will and his wife, and Will's wife has on these ju this jewelry, right? These stones, a big stone. He's dressed up, and he's looking like, oh, okay, I know what you, you did take care of your family because she had a big-ass rock around her neck. So Eloise um, is coming out. So it's kind of her, it's not her really coming out. It's just her kind of practicing. She has her crown on. She has her updo and she looks sick as a dog. She got her little book with her and she looks nervous. And, and then um, Daphne tells her, girl, if you just want to go to the library, because I know that's where you love to be. If you want to go to the library and stay the night, I, I don't care. And she was like, oh my God, thank you so much. And she was like, thank you for being so perfect. So I don't have to be. And Violet looked over her shoulder like, damn, I really done fucked my daughters up. But it's like you're trying to maintain tradition and you have an entire, your whole little tribe are breaking traditions. Anthony, Benedict, honey, I don't know how Francesca got to travel a girl all by herself. Where did, where did Francesca go? That's what I want to know. And then you have... Um, Eloise and Eloise is not wanting to get married. She does not see the benefit in it, even though it's very beneficial for the, the girls. Right. Um, she doesn't see the benefit in it. She doesn't understand it. And that's she's been my girl for the whole season. I'm here for Eloise. I can't wait till they get on her story. Hopefully it's after Anthony's. I wonder if they're just going to go in alphabetical order. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Featherington is at the brothel honey he is getting his drink on he's going through giving toast to people because he got the money honey so the uh, madam takes him to the room and he was like oh what do we got here the room is empty it's nobody on the bed but off to the side honey it's the bookies they're like what's up we know what you did honey you, you we know what you did they didn't say if they didn't say much all you did was all you saw was them that's it penelope and colin Penelope, I guess, is deciding. She makes a decision, I guess, to tell Colin how she feels about him. She's when she's about to tell him, he lets her know that he is going to be traveling. He's going to go to Greece. He's going to be, I guess, doing his um, his military duty or whatever. They all have to do military duty. I think that's what why he's going off. I'm not sure because he says I have to do my tour, so I don't think that he's doing his military duty so she was like good luck and everything so she didn't get to tell him how she felt so Eloise goes and sees the queen and she at the they're at the little outside you know um you know at the ball at the ball right so she walks up to the queen and the butler stops her he was like you can't just walk up to the queen girl what's up do you have something to tell her and she's like I um I, I know who Lady Whistledown is he was like don't worry about it we're about to his you know he runs his mouth too much so he goes we're gonna meet her at the printer we don't need you anymore thank you for your services but we're going to get her ass when she goes to put her get her take her stuff to the printer we're going to catch her ass down there so running his mouth 
Eloise is like, oh my God, I got, I can't let that happen. Anthony runs over to Sienna's house because he's gonna pick her up to take her to the ball and she answers the door. No, a man answers the door and he's looking like he has flowers and everything. And the man that he has been seeing her with answers the door and she was like, I got it. So she just lets him know, listen, I gotta do what's right for me. She says, I know I gotta look out for myself because no one else will. You are lost is what she said. And then she told him, basically, you're so lost, I can't even allow you to set me adrift. I said, yes, girl, you better tell him. You better tell his ass. I, I wish more women would just stand in the face of these wayward ass, low discipline, no discipline, no self-control ass men and let them know, I gotta do what's right for me. You don't have my best interest at heart, toodaloo you're out of here. And he's looking like, I'm sorry. He was like, I'm like, he looked at, he was like, I'm really sorry. No, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. And she was like, that man up there loves me for who I am. And I'm going to stay with the person who basically puts me as a priority and not want, and doesn't want me to go to some ball and put on some dress to make it seem like I'm somebody that I'm not. I'm sticking with the guy who fucks with me for being me gotta go closes the door that's how a lot of women should do these niggas honey the, at the printers Eloise is waiting right so she leaves the party the guy who is right driving the carriage he was like no we gotta go you you're out here too late I cannot be having you out here this late she was like no just one more second so lady whistle downs carriages carriage pulls up and here comes this man running down the alley with something in his hand and so Eloise jumps out the carriage and she was like, stop, stop. And he was like, she, and then she says, there, it's a trap. It's a trap. And so um, Lady Whistledown's carriage drives off. And he was like, why did you do that? And she was like, I don't know. I was confused. She was acting like she was confused. And that was it. Eloise saved Lady Whistledown. So Daphne and Simon um, are at the ball or whatever. And Dan Barry talks to Simon and tells him, are you guys still going to separate? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, basically telling her, you you in my business. And she was like, no, because, you know, when you have that much pride, you will, it will cost you everything and you will be left with nothing. So be mindful of the choices that you are making. Lady Danbury was really, she's really been Simon's auntie, basically, and just kind of like, making sure like not really i don't think she really meddles but she kind of just drops jewels like if you like when before when she told him if you're not going to marry her don't fuck it up if she has a chance to marry a prince now they want to separate he she's letting him know your pride is going to leave you with you're going to be all alone you're going to really and you're getting a taste of all this the balls the family being around family having a good time don't lose everything being prideful. Okay. Violet and Daphne are having a conversation and she's talking about, you know, what is going to happen with her and Simon. And she's like, you know, I loved your dad so much, but it's not like we did not have our problems. We had our problems, but we made a choice to love each other. And that's what it is. It's really, a, you have to choose to love each other. They start waltzing and then it starts to rain. The portrait gets wet. Daphne stays in the rain and she's just taking it all in and everybody leaves. The party was over. Later on, Daphne tells Simon that he, she found the letters and she didn't realize what he really went through with his dad. And she's like, you know what? I'm tired of pretending I love you. You do not have to be perfect for somebody to love you because that's what his father basically instilled in him is that you need to be perfect in order for me to love you. And you could see how the relationship with your caregivers or the lack of the relationship with your caregivers can affect your intimate personal relationships. It really can. And um, she says, I love you, flaws and all. Um, and I want to choose to love you and you can choose to love me. It can't be up to your dad. It can't be up to anyone else. Your happiness and what you can have access to cannot be 
forgotten because you trying to hold this thing with your dad. She was letting him know, okay? Back at the Featherington's home, the Featherington come, the Featherington's come home after the ball. They had a good time at the ball. They laughing and stuff like that. When they walk into the house, there's a bunch of people in there and Lady Featherington is looking crazy. And so her handmaid comes around. She goes, I have, I have, I have horrible news. I have horrible news. And they basically said that Lord Featherington was found dead. Baby Lady Featherington made a beeline to the office where all that money was and it was gone. I don't know how they got, who came in the house and got the money? Did he come back and give it? I don't know what happened. Can y'all, do y'all, let me know what happened. How did the money go missing? Because it was all in one place and now it's gone. So I don't know, did he, was he gambling the money that night? I don't know what happened. But anyways, ain't no more money. So she's sitting there crying. When I tell you the way she cried out, baby she was like ah. she cried out you ain't no more money honey and your husband is dead what are we gonna do simon comes in to talk to daphne after she's drying off on her little chaise lounge right there and he comes in and <sighs> child he gives her oh i don't know how to love and you gotta teach me how to first of all <laughs> i was like shut up how many times have you heard that? Oh, you got to teach me how to love. I, bitch, I'm learning too. I didn't even know what a fucking orgasm was three weeks ago. What the fuck do you need to teach me? I need to teach you how to love. What the fuck? I, uh, uh, anyways, I was like, she was, I don't know how to be the man you need me to be. I was like, shut up, Simon. And so she was like, I know you do. You can do it. So baby, they get to screwing, honey on top on the bottom honey and he does not pull out it looked like they knew that they had conceived at that moment they looked happy they were glowing the sun was shining through the window there it is the season's closing there is everything is coming to an end um penelope and eloise are having a conversation how she saved lady whistle down and she was like you did and she was very interested in that and then Marina is at the Featherington's home and the Featherington's are, are wishing her, they're saying goodbye. Marina tells Lady Featherington, how did you be with a man for so long that you didn't love? And she just basically says, you just grow to care about the person. We could tell that Lady Featherington wasn't really feel, feeling him, but she was like, you know, you have the kids and you have a family. After a while, you get used to it, honey. Marina leaves. She says bye to everybody. She gets in this carriage and there's Philip, Philip Crane, George's brother. So she accepted the proposal and I'm glad he came back now that she's actually pregnant. Hopefully the baby is okay. She drank that damn tea. Ain't no telling what was that, that tea was she was drinking. So they left. So Marina's off. Eloise was having a conversation with Benedict and he was like, yeah, because, um, he said him, him and, uh, Lady Delacroix was somewhere and she was like, wait, you were with her last night? And he was like, yeah, we were together. So, oh my God, she was like, oh my God, I did not figure out who Lady Whistledown is. So then Lady Whistledown's over, you know, Julie Andrews, her voice comes over. And then you could see a carriage with a woman with another letter. And she takes her hood off and it's Penelope this whole time. Penelope has been writing wonderfully. She's such a good writer. I was like, for her to be so young and to, and to be so inexperienced, the way that she gossips is good. I'm, I hope that no one ever reveals her identity. But now that we know that Penelope is actually Lady Whistledown, love to hear it. Next shot we see is Daphne is in labor. Daphne is in labor. She has a baby boy. The name is going to start with an A and that's what it is. A little baby. They got their little baby and that was the end. You guys, let me know what you think of the series. I fucking loved it. I cannot wait until next season. They are going to be focused on Anthony's story. Thank you guys so much. Let's get down in the comments. Protect your energy. Take care of each other. Peace.